All right, guys, so this video can be looked at as a challenge if you want to try it yourself, or you can just follow along like you would any other video. So we saw in the last video, the last lesson, that there's a bunch of different methods we can use to insert elements and, and other things like text and HTML onto the page. And insert before was one of those. Now, you might think that because there's an insert before, there's an insert after, but there isn't. So what I want you to do is create a custom insert after function where you can pass in uh, a new element. If you look down here at this example code here, if you pass in a new element like this li that we created and then some item that already exists in the DOM, your new item should get put after the, the existing. So in this case, I'm selecting the first li as the existing item and I'm passing my li here in as the new item. So it should get put after the after apples, okay, after the first item. And uh, you can use new l for your first uh, uh, parameter and then existing l for the second. Now, as far as hints, you can remember some of the properties to get parent and sibling elements. Okay, remember we looked at that a few videos back. And you can combine some of those, I'm not going to say which one, with insert before. So if you combine these together, there is a pretty simple way that you can make this work and you can insert a new element after an existing element. All right, so if you want to pause the video and try it, you can. If not, just follow along. Uh, and I'm actually going to copy. Uh, let's see, I want to go back to that because I just want to copy the this code right here because I want to run this exact code. So we'll paste that in. And now we want to create our function, which is called insert after. So insert after and that's being called right here, which is getting passed in this custom element that I want to add to the page. So we'll call that new element. And then the next thing we're passing in is an existing element, which is the first list item. So let's say existing element. All right. Now, remember some of the, the properties we looked at, such as parent element. So if I were to console log my existing element and then the parent element of that, I'm going to get the UL. Okay, so I have access to that unordered list and you could use parent node in this case as well. If I do parent node, that'll give me the same thing. So what I want to do is take the the parent element. So existing L dot parent uh, parent element and then I'm going to call on that insert before. Okay, so remember this from the last video, what insert before takes in, it gets called on the parent and then what it takes in is the new element that you want to insert and then whatever you want to put it before. Now, obviously, we want to put it after that's what this function is supposed to do, but we can go ahead and take the existing element. Now, if I run that and save it, insert me after it gets put. It actually gets put before apples, which obviously isn't what we want. We want this to insert it after. But all we have to do is simply add on to the existing element the next sibling property. Save that. And there we go. Now it's put after. Because if we put our new element before the, the existing elements next sibling, which is the next one, orange juice, that's the same as putting it after the apples. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And that's why it's important to understand these properties like parent element and next sibling and methods like insert before. Now, I'm not saying you have to remember all these right now, but at least know that that they exist and know that you can go on the MDN docs and you can look them up if you need to. And, and I still need to reference this stuff. Even for this course, there's plenty of stuff that I had to go and reference, but I know it's there and I know that these things are possible. Um, and, and I'm sure that for some of you, this this challenge seemed like really difficult where you didn't even know where to start, but then you see the answer and it's like one line. It's it's easy. Um, so hopefully this this helps some of you guys out. Uh, let's see. In the next video, we're going to start to look at replacing elements in the DOM.